holders to find the most tax advantage status. The concern, and they should. So, so it would be, a, uh, they want to do what's right. And so, you know, it concerns me going into an Mr. Smucker. Th thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good morning, uh, Mr. Werfel, Commissioner. Uh, I'm uh, actually okay with audits. We want people to uh, pay their taxes, and there should be a random way of selecting some t uh, tax returns to ensure that uh, there's an incentive for people to comply. I do want to, um, however, um, get your thinking uh, about some st statements that you made this morning. You've multiple times uh, talked about uh, high-income earners. You've talked about millionaires and billionaires. You've talked about complex tax returns in the same uh, sentence as tax avoidance and tax evasion. Do you believe that millionaires and billionaires are all tax cheats? I do not. Uh, do you believe that there is a reason for complex returns rather, uh, other than to avoid um, uh, t uh, taxes? A absolutely, there is. What would be some of those reasons? Well, I, I, here's my understanding, that, uh, that, that uh, CFOs of major companies, they have a responsibility to their board and to their shareholders to find the most tax advantage status. The concern, and they so, should. So it would be a problem for you if they took a legitimate tax Never. deduction? No, if, if their return is accurate and complete and legitimate, great. But that's not the concern that we have. That's not the, the, the issue. The issue was that because the IRS was not auditing it, at, 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 our audit rates were anemic, because we weren't investing in keeping pace, that these efforts in certain cases got to aggressive avoidance and then even evasion. And I can give you examples of where it's more prolific, and that's really where we want to focus. Well, it's where well, well, these efforts I, it's have just, become, It's have, troubling to me when you keep using the ter those terms in the same sentence as if all high-income earners, who, by the way, are paying most of our taxes, uh, are all looking to avoid taxes, because <laughs> that's not my experience with business owners, with, with corporate leaders. Uh, they want to do what's right. and so. You know, it concerns me going into an audit. Uh, you know, everyone is innocent until proven guilty. And if your entire organization is taking the approach that you're taking today, uh, you're actually feeling that people are guilty before the audit is even done. It was not my intention. My intention is to make sure we're increasing scrutiny on complex returns where there's high risk of evasion. Uh, do you have any information on um, what percentage of returns on high-income earners uh, result in no change? I can get that information for you. I don't have that at my fingertips. Do you have any information regarding the change rate after audits in all income uh, earners' uh, levels? Uh, for instance, um, you know, we know there's been fraud in those who receive the child tax credit. What percentage of individuals who have filed for the ta child tax credit uh, have uh, done it so fraudulently compared to high income earners. Do you have that information? I believe we have that and can get that to you. Yeah, could, could you share that uh, uh, with, with all of us? Uh, and I just, again, I want to caution you. Uh, you know, I have a lot of people who uh, do very well uh, and are proud to be part of America and part to, uh, proud to pay their taxes. And they don't want to hear from the IRS commissioner that he thinks that all of them are cheats. So I'd caution you in the language. Well, I, I would love to go on the record and say I do not believe all of them are cheats. But Thank I you. do get bothered when we see evidence of evasion. In, in, um, your, in your testimony, you've also characterized partnerships in the same way. That's deeply disturbing. You've said an increased audits of partnerships uh, is, is important because it, apparently, in your mind, partnerships, for some reason, are a category that is cheating more than others. Congressman, what we're trying to do actually is bring our audit rate back to historical norms. It's been anemic. And I do believe that when we're not doing the requisite amount of audits, when we're not showing that we are ready to enforce, that that does increase the risk of evasion. And that's what we're focused I don't, on. You know, it's to the Congressman Sewell just mentioned targeting specific populations. I think that should go across the board. I agree. I don't want IRS to target any population. I think in all categories, most people 
uh, want to pay their taxes and are doing their best to comply with the law. And so I, I, hope, I agree with that. I hope what you're doing is a randomized uh, targeting, uh, a randomized looking at uh, audits or at uh, returns to ensure that uh, everyone is complying to the best of your ability. We're looking for spaces where we think evasion is proliferating and trying to hold people accountable for what they owe. A lot of, too many of these organizations are shielding their income. That doesn't mean they all are. That means that there's more work to do for the IRS to make sure people are paying what they owe. Thank you, I'm out of time. Thank you. They want to do what's right, and so, you know, it concerns me going into an audit. If their return is accurate and complete and legitimate, great. But that's not the concern that we have. That's not the, the, the issue. The issue was that because... There's reasons. Well, I, I, here's my understanding, that uh, holders to find the most tax advantage status. The concern, and they so, should. So it would be a 